Don't know. Hopefully I'm live. Hello, everybody. All right. Hello. Welcome to YouTube. I don't know if I'm on. I hope I am. Let me know if you hear me. YouTube's been acting real weird tonight, specifically my connection between OBS and YouTube. But things look like they're working. Hard to say. All right. Well, we'll just get started and then we'll see what happens. Uh, so if y'all were here last night, uh, you will know that Animate Diff version 3 came out. If you weren't here last night, then I'm telling you, Animate Diff version 3. Yeah, uh, so I've been using that all day and all night, uh, and, uh, I don't know if I'm online. I have no idea. I'm hoping I am. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, hopefully this will all sort itself out soon. But yeah, uh, Animate Diff version 3 came out, so I've been testing it and testing with different control nets, playing around and seeing what happens. And then it uh, occurred to me, uh, maybe I should just do like an in-depth stream on how to build out these um, uh, video comparison grids that I've been making uh, to test the different uh, settings. Because uh, it's a good skill to have in Comfy, um, being able to... Uh, align your stuff and 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 make comparisons and and because you can do that you know like with even with image grids and stuff where it's like i want to try 10 different prompts across you know 10 different seeds x y plots and stuff like that we can do all that with uh with comfy um but more specifically i'm just going to talk about doing it manually uh to do uh comparison grids like these so you can test your settings and see what you're doing it's good to do stuff like this and compare it side by side to see what effect the this particular control net is having with this input footage, things like that. This will be a nerdier than normal stream, but I'm basically just going to save this uh, grid workflow thing and then clear it and uh, start over. And uh, we'll just uh, build it from scratch. We'll start with by building a grid and then we'll uh, use that grid to, uh, like use that concept to extrapolate it into video grids. So yeah, let's start with a uh, K sampler. Out of the K sampler, we need a VAE decode. Out of the VAE decode, we need a, uh, well, we can just use a save image for now because we're just doing images. Hey, Simone. All right. Uh, let's add our checkpoint. We'll just use a uh, photon. Uh, out of the clip, we need a clip text encode. Actually, we need two of them. These are our, you guessed it, our positive and negative prompts. SFW, nude. What's well, an easy thing we can compare so we can show how these, these, te these grids work with the text, uh, text masks? Um, let's do two different prompts. Yeah, let's do two different prompts. This will be prompt number one, and we'll add a prompt number two. We're going to use the same negative prompt for both. We need one more K sampler. Let's make sure that's negative, make sure that's positive. Put a model in. Okay. Latent image. We're going to use an empty latent image. That's inside our image. And we're actually just going to use this for later. Um, when I'm done, I'm going to rebuild all this with get and set nodes so you can see how that works with like variables and stuff. It'll clean up the workflow quite a bit. But for now, I'm just going to plug stuff in so you can get a, a more basic idea of the rundown here. The reason we only have one is because we can reuse this NSFW nude uh, negative prompt on both of these samplers. And then this is our first and our second prompt. So we'll call this one uh, title positive prompt one. And you'll be positive. We're going to need another VA decoder, another save. And we're going to call this, we're going to make a folder for this just because we're testing. We're going to call it test. You don't have to call it test, but I'm going to. Test, and then I'm going to put this uh, this one in as uh, uh, prompt one, and this one will be test prompt two. So that's going to create a file named prompt one number and then prompt two numbers so we can see them together. Uh, we're going to extrapolate or we're going to build on this as well, um, but just for now, this will show what we're doing here. So we're going to go apple and we're going to go orange. Oops, what did I forget? Our VAE needs to go into the decoder. All right, there's an apple and there's an orange. So we want to actually take these two and put them side by side and put the prompt above them. So we're going to need a couple node packs. We're going to need um, KJ nodes for Comfy UI. Uh, that's for the text mask and some of the other nodes we need for the uh, moving of images around. And I think the other one we need is... Uh... <coughs> I thought it was called Image Combine. Let me go find it. Yeah, Comfy. I know I have a lot. 
possible <coughs> image selector. <coughs> Pardon me. Image selector. There it is. You just have to type it in 75 different ways. Uh, we also will need uh, a video helper suite. Um, I mean, I tell you guys to download this every single video, but if you haven't yet. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it for now. So yeah, we want to um, combine these images. So we want to do what's called image concatenation. Uh, the word is concatenate, but the node is actually spelled wrong, which is hilarious. We're going to need an image concatenate node, and that's in KJ nodes. So think about this as a node that takes two images and sticks them together based on the direction that you give it. Plug in image one, plug in image two, and direction right means image one, then to the right of it will be image two. It's dead simple. Uh, we can use this in combination with uh, different things. So we could put, we could put uh, text on top of the image, and then we could have another one over here, right? By concatenating this one to the left, this one to the right, this one to the left, this one to the right, and then this one top, this one down. So I'll show you how it works. We have our two images here, so we want them side by side. So this image output goes from image one, and this image output goes from image two, okay? So we're putting image one on the left, and we're putting image two on the right because it's, you know, so we're going to concatenate these into a new image. We're going to save image, and we're going to call this test uh, grid. We're going to do another run. Okay. Now we have a comparison grid. It really is that easy. The rest of it, the only really hard part is when you have text masks, you have to determine the width of that text mask in order to make this all work. So everything has to be equal. Everything has to even out. Um, I'll show you how to do that. It's not that bad. There's a node called get image size that helps you and there's a node called uh uh image or image crop plus or image crop plus i think yeah and uh yeah image crop plus which is in comfy ui essentials pack uh yeah comfy ui essentials let's drop that in there and uh the other node that's helpful is get image size which is in Dare foo comfy UI modded. No, what is this? Oh, this isn't it. I just found this one today. Bear with me. There it is. Yeah, same node pack. Uh, comfy UI essentials. Get image size and image crop. These two nodes are so helpful when you're trying to push stuff around. And I'll show you why later. But, you know, imagine you're bringing a video in and you just want to crop to the center 512 by 512 to do all of your control net pre processing. You could do all that with this. I mean, you can do it with the load video node from, from VHS also, but these two are going to let you get these images around your system at the right sizes. It's awesome. Uh, so yeah, we'll be using both of these nodes today, uh, specifically here. So we want to add text, ma text masks on these so we know what the hell they're saying. Okay. Let me just find the right one here. Yeah. Same way we're concatenating... Uh, uh, videos, we can concatenate text as well. Um, so, uh, this is like, uh, confusing, but like, let's go. So we want the prompt from both of these, but we don't actually want to have to, um, write it, uh, over and over again. So we're actually going to, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this, I'm trying to explain what I think. And it's, that's a bad, bad combo. Just let me, uh, we got this, we got a clip, we can convert the text to input. We can. I get the conditioning out. Okay, so let's change our text to inputs on these. Uh, string, simple string, which is in use everywhere. There's a bunch of string nodes. String input. Anyway, find a find a string node you like. Text string from WAS Node Suite. Actually, this one's perfect. Uh, I like WAS Node Suite. I uh, recommend it. There we go. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, so we'll use this. So this will be easy prompt. And then this is going to be text B is going to be our first prompt, Apple. Second is going to be our second prompt, Apple Orange. Second one goes here. First one goes here. And we're going to add a uh, string concatenate prompt. Yep. And we're going to make A and B inputs. So we're concatenating prompt with Apple. And then that's going to go into our first text one. 
And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna concatenate the title with the second prompt, okay? I'll show you why this is important, but this is for text labeling. Uh, one thing I notice when I'm doing this is just start naming all of these things what they are, okay? Prompt, this is our prompt A, this is our prompt B. We need to feed these into text nodes now. So let's get a text mask node, create text mask. You only have to, you, after you do this, you'd only have to do that again. Like you can copy and paste all this crap. So like, yeah, it's gonna be annoying and infuriating the first few times you do this, but I've been through all the pitfalls. So hopefully this will be faster. So we need to know, it needs to know two things. It needs to know the width and the height and the width and the height matter because when it's concatenating, all that stuff has to be equal. So the the width of the text mask you create has to be the same width as the images that you're putting together or the image that you're putting together. In this case, it's actually easy because everything's 512 by 512. But if we were doing stuff where we wanted variable sizes and things like that, we want to actually set this up so it can it can expand and, and subtract to, to what we need. Uh, so we got our text mask and in our text mask, we're going to change um, text text to input and we're going to grab string one. So that's going to be prompt Apple. Right? Same thing down here, 512 by 40. Prompt B, prompt orange, prompt orange. This is taking string two, B, which is apple. This is taking string three, which is orange. We can actually create, if we want multi-level prompts, like long, long worded prompts, um, we can change these inputs to in, these text things to inputs and get longer string inputs and plug those in. Or we can change this up. We don't have to use this node. We're just using this node because it's easy and I'm only gonna do short prompts for this demo. Okay. <clears throat> We got our prompt, we got our thing, everything's kosher. And then, so uh, what do we wanna do? We wanna actually put these text max masks above the things, but we still want this to go to the right. Let's pull this out, cause this is our sort of our final one. Um, so we just need to put it on top and, and, and put it below. So we need another image concatenate, con concatenate, uh, VAE decode into image two. Same deal here, VA decode, sorry, into image two. So what goes in image one, our text masks. Text mask A, text, text mask B. If I did this right, and I probably didn't. Yes, I forgot. Well, this will work for now. There's two more things I wanna cover. Right, what did we do wrong? What did I do wrong? I didn't connect these two to this one, so it just pushed all the way through. Size of tensors much match accepted size expected size 40, but got size 512. So let's look at our thing here. Yes, you see, I've got them going to the right. I want them to go down. So text on top, image on bottom, text on top, down, image on bottom. These two tech image left on on left, image two on right. Down, down, right, right, down, down, right. Hey, look what we did. So now you can make comparison grids of anything you want, um, however you like. Uh, so let's, uh, let's make this 48. And then the other thing we're gonna do is uh, our width and height, uh, that's being determined here in our empty latent image. If we were using input footage or whatever, we can actually get the image size from that input footage. So um, let's walk back to what uh, I was doing with Animate Div uh, now that we understand this. So. Uh, hopefully this makes sense to everybody. If uh, anybody's confused, feel free to drop questions in the chat. But yeah, this is the most sort of simplistic way to do um, comparison grids of whatever you want to compare. Uh, yeah, cool. I mean, you can rearrange it however you like, but uh, I'm trying to get it all on the same screen so you guys can have a screenshot. Pretty good. I think that pretty much. There's always better ways to do it, I guess. But yeah, so that's the the, the basic idea, right? Uh, text image, text image side by side. If you wanted to, um, if you wanted to put them all, um, you know, stacking down, change this to down, and it should do it like in a. Whoa! What did I break? This is cool. Let's just leave right alone. I think I might have unplugged something here when I was moving stuff around. 
So here's our chance to rebuild the whole workflow. This is my only gripe with these, you know, concatenate things to figure out the routing. Did I mess up a file size somewhere? Oh yeah, look at that. 552 by 512. I've been having this bug all day with Comfy where when I, I, I'm, uh, I just click somewhere and the numbers change. It's incredibly annoying. I love how it keeps making the Apple logo. Okay, down, down, down should work now. Yeah, so what that tense, <laughs> that Apple looks a little busted. Um, what that tensor error means is that this, uh, there's like a size mismatch somewhere, and that was because the, the file size. So yeah, what I was doing was just making these grids with videos to control the, um, to see what the different control nets were doing, the different control net preprocessors and the different strengths and stuff like that. So uh, let's delete this stuff and start over. VHS, video combined, four frames per second, P4. All right. Uh, let's change this to what's today's date? 2023, 12, 16, uh, 24 FPS. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so we're going to add animate diff to the party model. Animate diff loader with context. We're going to use version three, pass the model all the way through. So animate diff goes through the model, uh, or the model goes through animate diff. Add context options. Uh, that's the, um, Let's just note here, animate diff uniform context options. All right. Uh, cool. So for a batch size, we're going to go 16, and this should make an animation of an apple, if all is right with the world. Nice. Tensor tears. Okay, that doesn't look like an apple, but, uh, you know, it's definitely an animation. Not sure why it's so terrifying. Let's try Tropical Sunset. See if it's a scary head as well. I know my nodes are uh, close together, but um, the... Uh... So, what is going on here? It's like it's not doing my prompts. Very strange. I might delete these and try these. Maybe changing the inputs in and out was breaking it. Yeah, what the hell? There we go. I think I broke it by uh, switching those inputs. So maybe don't do the input switching and maybe we'll find another way to pull the prompts out if you need that. That is more like it. Okay. So animate diff is working. Uh, everything is hunky dory. So we should be able to do, um, you know, 32 frame run and have it jump context windows. Let's find out. Yeah, version three is really nice. All right. <clears throat> so we made uh concatenated uh we made concatenated images, but we have to to make concatenated videos we need to do uh a little bit more calculation. We need widths and heights. I mean, we need um well we don't really need widths and heights if they're all the same, but uh if we want to make this modular to basically take in any input, you can do that as well. But Let's just keep it all 512 by 512 because you're going to be, when you're making these grids, you're going to be generating a ton of clips. So it's probably best to just keep it 512. But we can do that by cropping uh, the input footage. So then your input footage can be whatever the hell you want. Let's say we wanted to test uh, two different, um, two different uh, animative motion models on the same seed. So we'll set our seed to 42069, 42069, because it's the best number in the world. Uh, we're going to actually duplicate this K sampler and just drop another one down here. Duplicate this. Whoops. Duplicate this. Late in the samples, image. And then the rest of this stuff. Another animate diff. And we'll try the temporal diff model. Model, model goes to model. You can use the same prompts, same latent image. Different animation. Actually, use the same context. A negative prompt didn't come through because I missed. Let's make sure the positive. Good. Positive. Uh, VAE goes into the. 
Okay. So this now is going to generate two different videos. Uh, let's do 16 frame animations because they'll be faster. Yeah, DW Pose is uh, really good. Uh, I was also playing with Media Pipe Face today, which is really good. There's a control net for that as well. Uh, you can use it exactly the same as you use DW Pose, and there's a preprocessor for it. Just type Media Pipe in here. Face Mesh Preprocessor. It's sick. So we got our fixed seeds. So we're going to know we, we basically want to do the same run, but this one with the V3 and this one with the temporal diff uh, animate. So yeah, uh, that should do it. Let's have it run. You know, it's because it's comfy. Everything is non-linear in the sense that we can share uh, data streams from the two. So we only have to set our prompt and our empty latent and our uniform context options and our checkpoint stuff in one place. Then we can just route it all to the two different K samplers for the two different. So yeah, it's really sick. So remember with video, you always have the same have to have the same number of frames and the same size for the videos if you're gonna be stapling them together with the concatenate thing. All right, so there's our two videos. This one is with um boop, 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 B3, this one's with animate uh temporal diff. So how do we stick them together? Image con uh image concatenate. Image concatenate, that's concatenate. Okay, uh, VAE decoder image one, VAE decoder image two. Right. Grab another one of these video combined nodes, spit that out right. for thing. And then uh, this folder, we're going to call it grid. Or we're going to call this 24 frame per second uh, V3. And this one, uh, we're going to call 24 frame per second uh, temporal diff, just so we know, you know, we got it right in the file names. Uh, and the grid is the one that, you know, 24 frames per second grid. This should just work unless I miss something. So let's try. So now you have a, you know, a video where you can see the two, uh, the two clips looping together. But, you know, obviously we're going to want to add titles to these because we're going to forget which side is as time goes on. Uh, so we got our things to the right, but we need to add stuff on top of each clip. So we need to go one image con con concanate before. Concanate, and then uh, that's gonna go uh, here. Oh, let's think this way. We need our text mask. Create text mask that's in KJ nodes. Uh, so all we have to do is just change the text for this one. This is V uh, animate diff uh, V3, and uh, we need another text mask nodes, copy paste. And this one is uh, temporal. That's all we need. Uh, there, the videos are 512 by 512, so 512 by 48, 512 width. By 48 height will give us enough room to put them on top. So we're going to need two of these image con concanate nodes. So we can make these things called redirects in Comfy, which is nice. So just drag something you need out and do reroute. And then we've got this guy here. So we'll drag our VAE decode reroute out. And then we have our two VAE decoders for uh, our image, our, our two videos. So this helps us here when we have our mask, our thing move this up so this is the first one this is the mask this is the video text mask video text mask yeah, right. and now we need to connect them to this you go here and you go here yes it's mad now you see what that error said q prompt uh size of tensors much match no. Sizes of tensors must match, except in dimension one. Uh, expected size one, but got 16 for tensor number one. Uh, what does that mean? How many frames are in the video? There's 16 frames, and it got one because we have frames set to one, right? So batch size, I need to actually set that first. Now, normally, we'd you do this with control net with a load image for our control net, and we will end up doing that. But for now, I'm just going to use an int node. I like the int constant node from KJ nodes. This lets you just set a value. And that's all we're doing. Value of 16. And this we're going to rename this to our frame count. Okay. So we have this node that has our frame count in it. So we're going to change batch size to an input. Convert batch size to input. Plug that in. Grab this over here. We're going to convert frames to input. Convert frames to input. Now we've got frames as the input. This goes here as well. Now it knows I need to make 16 frames of text masks and 16 frames for the video. So this is our master frame count. We can use this anywhere we want, anywhere we need the number of it. So uh, this, this should, oh, it's doing another one for some reason. 
Oh, I changed the. Technically, I changed the value. But let's move this stuff in. It sucks you can't uh, see the title on the reroutes. There we go. So now we have titles on our videos so we can actually see at a glance what we're doing. These are great for Twitter or great for anything else when you're trying to compare stuff or show people, you know, the difference between different things. This is like aces for now. Another thing we can do is on the text stuff, this text X and text Y is the like amount of pixels it puts on the left or on the top of the text. If you notice that text was like right up against the like right up against the side. So I'm just gonna give it a little 15, 15 pixel buffer on the left there. So that should yeah, just give them a little indentation on the end there. Uh yeah. So that is the most basic setup for a uh, a video window. Uh, if you have multiple, uh, like if your videos are different sizes and stuff, we can capture the width and stuff and then and then put that in uh, to the width. So like I, any of these things, these are called widgets, these, uh, these like sliders and selectors. Any of these are convertible to inputs and then you can plug stuff into the inputs. So if you have something in multiple places that you need to set, you can do it like this in one place. And this is, you know, setting the value in three different places, right? So. Stuff like this will save you a lot of time because uh, you can put all your master values at the very front of your, your project, you know, over here, right? And then you just really only have to select the stuff, load your video, and hit go every time. And you got your prompt and your size and, like, everything's just right here. So, and then everything else can kind of just... We're going to move this stuff up here. Let's put that in a group. Right, so this will be our... We'll call this um, uh, grid assembly. And we'll make this crazier in a minute because we're going to uh, add control net. And then we'll be able to show the input footage, the control net footage, and what it's doing um, side by side by side. So I got the hiccups. If anyone wants to, uh, yeah, if anyone wants to screen grab the way the, uh, the way this works here, this would probably be the best place to screen grab it. Take a screenshot. I'll leave that up for a sec. This is our text node the text mask and this is our VAE decoder reroute text node VAE decoder two concatenate them down. So text above image, text above image, text above image on the left, text above image on the right. So that's how we're building it out, right? So that is this, that is this, that is this, that is this. And that's how we're connecting them. Um, you can, you can then take this and go crazy with it. The only thing you have to remember is the text width has to match the entire width of the, the row it's in. Okay. So if I, I'll show you how this works in a minute when we get to the other stuff, but if I had three videos side by side and then I wanted another row or row, yeah, another row of videos underneath that text is not going to be long enough. The text mask is not going to be long enough to go across three images. So we're going to have to sort of uh, like uh, get the final width of that, you know, uh, the three videos smashed together and then put that into the width of the text mask. So it's a little nonlinear and it's a little hard to think of that way, but yeah. So it'll, it'll make sense when we do it because it's going to error out and then I'll explain why. But yeah, basically for just doing side by side stuff, this is super simple. So and you could add the prompt to here. You could add whatever you want to it, or you know, just just remember, or or save the text file, or save the prompt. Uh, yeah, that's a simple comparison for video. Mm. Now I'm gonna add Control Net and all the fixins, and we'll make it do cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, am I gonna get the Laura for the V3? Yeah, I have it, but it's not set up yet. I don't think. Sync a ding. Uh, diff evolve. Oh, you got that. Yeah, I don't think the Motion Laura stuff works with the new Motion Lauras for V3 yet. Uh, it's a whole new uh, sort of framework for the Motion stuff for uh, V3. Uh, where'd you start? Okay, so let's add some control. That Sorry, I don't mean to keep you on it. All right. Uh, so tempted to delete this, but I guess we don't really need it. Okay. Um, so we don't actually need two animate diff loaders now because we're going to use the same animate diff. Uh, 
uh, the thing we're going to do differently is two different control nets. So let's move this stuff over here. Let's move this. Then we're going to have a control net here and a control net here. Right? Control net, apply advanced. So let's add another one. <sighs> Conditioning, positive to positive, positive to positive, negative to negative, negative to negative, positive to positive, positive to negative to negative. Control net moves through the clip. So we take the conditioning from the clip, go through control net. And we need a control net loader advanced. Okay. This one up here. So let's do, uh, well, let's do the face stuff that I was doing before. So we'll do media pipe and we'll do uh, open pose. Yeah. Uh, plug that control net into control net, control net to control net. So we're loading control net. We have our control net. We don't have images for control net, but we can fix that. VHS nodes, we want uh, load video path. All right. I already downloaded some stuff for this, so I'll just use one of the videos I downloaded from Pexels. Yeah, you can get these videos on Pexels. We're just going to extract the uh, face out of this and then dream with it. You just paste the path to the video in here. Force frame rate of 24 frames per second. And uh, this video is wide, so we're going to force size and we're going to hold the height at 512 and let the width be whatever it is. Uh, we're going to do that because we're going to then image crop 512 by 512, okay, in the center. So now, no matter what the, we can use this and this in conjunction to make sure that we load the video in the correct size and crop it where we want it. Uh, in this case, we want to get the face. The face in this video is in the center. So we're going to load the entire video into the, into the context, and then we're going to crop into the center so we get the exact size that we want to feed into control net. This, it does two things for us. It, um, it gives us the right size, makes things faster. And control net is trained at these resolutions. So giving control net um, it, footage that's way too big, like the preprocessors, uh, can make it tape like exponentially longer, if not break or make you run out of VRAM. So it's generally good practice to give the control net the resolutions they're trained on. In this case, it's 512 by 512. So we're going to do that. So we have these and we have these, but we need to pre-process this footage for both of these. We need the open pose footage and we need the media pipe footage. So before like an automatic, you'd have to go do that in the control net tab. But for here, all we have to do is just add a pre-processor. So we want a media pipe face pre-processor, media pipe face mesh pre-processor. And we want a DW open pose or DW, DW pre-processor. All right. This one's our media pipe. This one's our open pose. Uh, we take our image crop out, go in, image crop out, go into our preprocessor. Once the preprocessor is finished, we're going to spit that into our control net. Preprocessor is finished, we're going to spit that into our control net. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to save these as videos so that we can see what's happening. So we're going to add a video combine, nope, just like these ones. In fact, you can just copy and paste these because they already have the, the right setting. So we drag this DW pose estimation into a video combine node. And then uh, make sure you change the file names for these things so they make sense. Okay, open pose, source. And we're going to need another one of these video combined nodes up here for the, uh, the other one. And we want the media uh, pipe face mesh output into here. Same thing, 24 frames per second. And we're going to call this one media pipe. And the other thing we're going to do is just save the little clip that we're making here just for our own sanity so we can see what we're actually doing. There is method to this madness, I promise. It's not just complete overlord, overload. And we call that source, okay? Got our source, we got our open pose source. We have our media pipe source. We have uh, 24 FPS, uh, what's this, media pipe? And this is 24 FPS open pose. Okay, loading the video, cropping it, combining it, sending it to our, uh, media pipe and DW pose estimation, sending it to control net after that, combining it into a video, sending it to control net, combining it into a video, sending these two into the K samplers one by one. We're gonna render both ones using the different control nets. We're gonna leave the strength at one for both of them. And we're gonna keep the same fixed seed. So we're gonna see what having this input with the same everything, but with the only thing being different being these two control nets. Then once we do that, I'll help you. We'll, we'll, we'll build this grid out to actually assemble this stuff into uh, usable, uh, you know, footage.
Um, so what are these? This is open pose, and this one is media pipe. All right, let's try it. Oh, we should also change the prompt because uh, the input footage is uh, somebody smiling. So let's say a person smiling in a rainy New York City alley, uh, photography, 35 millimeter, Fuji film, uh, cinematic lighting. Actually, let's do uh, a 35 year old woman. Jeez. All right, cool. Hit it. I made a mistake. View queue, cancel. Okay. We were setting our frame count here, but we don't need to do that anymore. We can actually use this um, this video loader to do all that. So let's delete that. Our batch size is now determined by our frame count. Our frame count also determines how many frames are in each text mask, right? All right. I think that's everything. And now we can set our frame load cap here to 16. So we're only going to load the first 16 just for sanity's sake. So there's our DW. That's our open pose estimation. I'm sorry, media pipe estimation. There's our open pose estimation. There's our input footage. See how it's cropped into the center? 512 by 512. Easy peasy. We didn't squish. We didn't squeeze. We didn't mash her face up. Very cool. So this is cool, but it's not enough information, right? We want to get the source video. Uh, we want to get the open pose uh, estimation videos and the final results all side by side so we can compare them, right? Like this is cool to compare, you know, to what two things do, but it'd be really cool to see them all synced up in, in harmony. Now we need to pull all these in uh, into the, uh, the grid system. So this is going to be fun. And by fun, I mean not so fun, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. I'm going to delete all this, and we're going to start over. Right. So this is our final combine. Let's make this a little bigger. Okay, so we have our text. We don't actually need it yet. The text we're going to do later. Right. What are we going to need here? We're going to need video one and video two. Whoa, stay there. Play video one and video two. So this is our final result one and final result two. Okay. We also want to have our uh, input footage and our... Uh, like the open pose or the media pipe. So what do we do? All right, well, we have our output, right? So let's just add redirects for all this stuff. Let's go out from our DW pose estimation. Okay, so that's our, these ones are our, our, our uh, finals. These are the open pose, right? Like the, uh, the control net stuff. And what's the other thing we need? We need the source footage. We actually only need that once because we can duplicate. But what we need is this out. Let's drag this up here and make that a reroute as well. So this should help keep us a little less insane, okay? These are our outputs. These are our open pose information or control net information. And this is our uh, thing. And then these are our text boxes. So how are we going to smash all this stuff together? Well, we're going to go, uh, what makes the most sense? Let's do image concatenate. So to the right, we're going to put, um, no, to the right, let's go, uh, first image and the, uh, the control net input. And then we'll do another image concatenate to the right. And we're going to plug this in here okay. and we're going to do the same thing here. So if I'm right, this should go, uh, Image one, image two. So the image one to the left, uh, the uh, control net source to the, the middle and the uh, uh, source to the right. Same deal here. Image two, control net two. Uh, the text is currently disabled. So let's see what happens. Holy crap. So maybe it makes more sense to have the result, the result in the middle and the this stuff on the left. Hard to say. Yeah, it feels like it's backwards. So let's uh, let's rewire it. Let's rewire this. Okay. Source, source, uh, yes, and then the result. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. That's the input footage. That's what we did to it, and then that's the final result. All right. So this is all fine when everything's five twelve by five twelve. But you know, if we had to do some responsive stuff, it might be a bit of a nightmare. Oh, 
And the other thing we need to do is add the text. So how do we add the text when we don't know how wide it's going to be? We actually have to calculate the width of this. Sorry, the width of this. We need to calculate the width of this. I think get image sized. This width is going to be our text box width. So we're going to change this to uh, we're going to change width to an input. Okay. The width goes in here and it goes in here. It's going to be the same for all of them because they're all the same size. And if I am correct, that should add the text on top. Uh, no, it won't because we haven't actually added the text yet. The text needs to go one more of these. So the text needs to go on the top of these rows, but it needs to be the width of all three. So one, two, three down. So text <laughs> is so confusing. Uh, so for the first run, hey, okay. Wait, what is this? Okay. Oh, I'm just stupid. Uh, unfortunately, I think that works. I wish it was smarter, but it is what it is. Right, right up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that worked. Okay, cool. Uh, media pipe open pose. Okay, so here's our whole workflow. Hey, okay. So let's walk through this whole workflow again. Just, uh, cause holy shit. But yeah. <laughs> that's it again i'm gonna prop this on my uh on my discord later so you guys can just uh just plug it in and play with it because like no need in sitting there read the, i you know you can rebuild it if you want and i recommend you do because it helps your brain uh get around get get around all like all this stuff i get you don't have to okay uh just let me add some groups here so this makes a lot more sense Okay, doesn't help much, but you know, let's rename this. This is animate diff. This is our setting prompt, and uh, just prompt is fine because we'll probably end up taking our taking this from our crop. Yeah, from this size. Let's do that. Empty latent image. We're gonna change to uh, inputs width and height. There we go. And we need to get image size from this crop here. That's gonna go. Okay. All right. Uh, so now, I guess you can kind of go there. We don't really need you anymore. You're just sort of dead weight. Okay, cool. All right. And this is uh, input footage. Okay. This is control net two, control net one, diffusion one. Oh my god. Worst comfy bug ever. Title will be Diffusion 2. I think, I think that's it. All right, the groups didn't help much. I'll admit that. Oh, that that just sucks. I hate that. Purple, 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 purple. Okay, cool. All right, let's walk through it again. Uh, so we're loading our checkpoint onto the prompt. Uh, the prompt goes into diffusion. Well, it goes into both control nets. We're doing two different control nets. We're pre-processing media pipe and we're pre-processing DW pose. We're saving them. Uh, we're cropping everything to 512 by 512. We're getting all that stuff from this input footage. We're applying both of them at one and then we're using this grid assembly stuff here in order to um in order to create this uh final grid of videos so we can compare everything together the cool part is the final result is then you can then uh you know test your stuff and see what it actually does see if it makes a difference if you want to add more stuff to the grid you just keep adding these sort of you know these little packs of uh of nodes and uh assemble more into the grid just like i did I'll I'll make this workflow available on my Discord so you can uh, just plug it in and start playing. But yeah, so let's try uh, adding some more frames to the input and see what happens. So in order to control our um you know our frame count, we just uh, the frame count of our input footage is is pushed everywhere on this workflow. So 
let's do uh, 96 frames. Get them all. And uh, this prompt is cool, so let's let it run. So now it's going to extract 96 frames from the footage. It's going to do all of the control netting. It's going to save all the stuff. And then uh, it's going to diffuse two runs. And then it's going to staple all that together here. Uh, and it's going to show us what the media pipe does versus what the open pose does. And once we have an idea of what both of those do at one, we can then determine how much of each one we want to use on each. So maybe we really like the way media pipe does the the eyes and teeth and the the, the movements of that. Um, but but uh, open pose is providing some more structure for the thing, like the 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 person or the composition or their mood or whatever. So then you could set the strength of media pipe to 0 0.8, and you could set the strength of open pose to 0 0.4 or something. Run them in conjunction, and you get a good idea of what you can do. Now you can just plug in other, uh, plug in other control nets, do different preprocessors, change the titles in these text masks, and uh, just make all the comparison grids uh, you want until the end of time. Yep. Uh, it wants 512 frames. Can somebody explain to me why that? Is it possible the width got plugged into the batch size? <laughs> oh my god. All right, I'm gonna have to kill Comfy UI. So what happened there is our frame count from our thing got disconnected from our batch size and our height got put into our batch size. The reason I knew that is because it asked me to generate 512 frames and that just seems like a lot. Let's plug our batch size in uh, and uh, make sure that works. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, I might have to kill Comfy. Yeah, so don't do that. I know exactly when that happened too, and I was trying to plug in the nodes. And Comfy likes to decide, oh, I'll just do what I want. All right, cool. Yeah. Should do 96 frames this time. Boop, 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 boop. All right, this is a good time as any to take a stand up and move your knees. I'm going to do the same and grab a little water uh, while this runs. Uh, yeah, take a break, stand up. Or don't. I'm not your mom. All right, looking pretty cool. <laughs> you get a much better idea of what these control nets are doing this way, how specifically they're influencing the motion. Come on, one minute. We got this. What's everybody else working on tonight? What have you been diffusing lately? Do 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 do. Thirty minutes. Thirty seconds. Thirty minutes. We go two more. <clears throat> Twenty three seconds, maybe less. All right. BAE decoding. Ninety six frames. Boom, now combining all into one big video. Nice, there we go. But if you need that file, I mean, this stuff's all just in your uh, comfy UI output folder there, right? Mine's huge, give me a sec. <laughs> My poor computer. Uh, Maybe I can just get to it here. Yeah, today's date. Yeah, uh, see the grid. Yeah, 24 FPS grid. Oh, that's the little one. There it is. Yeah, so you got, you know, all this stuff separated. And if you need to use these media pipe things, you can always keep them around and reuse them. You don't have to keep generating them every time. But yeah, I mean, that's that's it. That's the whole workflow. Um, 
So if you wanted to swap out different things, like try different preprocessors and stuff like that, uh, we can do that. We can do depth and uh, like line art. Let's see what that does. Actually, let's add more, more and more. Let's just add uh, two more. Yeah. So this is, <laughs> yeah, let's add one more. One more. That'll be confusing enough. All right. So we need, <laughs> we need to copy these groups, control net two, diffusion two, and uh, video combine. We need to do this stuff again. Okay. We need all these nodes. We okay. Here's another another setup. Uh, yes. So we're gonna do. Yep. Let's do Zoe depth. Image comes from our load video node. Actually, no, it comes from our image crop node. Sorry, I know this is far away. Image crop to image, and we need our positive and negative prompt from here. Let's move this up here for now. Positive, negative, and then this positive and negative goes to our next K sampler. It's already connected somehow. All right, cool. So a depth image goes into here. Sorry, I plugged the wrong thing into this. We want the Zoe map. This is actually what gets, I need to plug the image crop into the preprocessor to make the depth. Yep. Depth. Okay, so uh, we have these now. Uh, so what do we have to do? We have to add another row. We have to smack another one together and add another row. So, um, <laughs> copy and paste our text mask. Change this one to depth. All the settings will be the same. So what do we need? We need the frames and width. Where do we get the frames and width? Where the same place we get these from. Where does this width come from? It comes from here. And the frames, they come from load video that frame count there so we're gonna drag this frames okay frames and width text mask uh that's our second text mask this is our third text mask. this is the depth of, why is this connected to anything oh right because this is to the input this is always confusing because when the cables come around the front i always think they're coming out of the back but nothing's plugged into the output yet it's just because this one's coming across it and in I kind of wish these would route underneath so you could see that they're like connected. That's what we could do. Here's our third text text mask. And I need to add another right. Uh, no, need another set of these, right? So we need another reroute. Our third VAE decoder needs to reroute out there. So if we remember, these are our main outputs. These are our control net outs, and this is our source. All right. So we need to add another one of these to these. That's that redirect I just made. That's our third output. I'm going to make a redirect for our third control net, which is this. Whoop. And we'll drag that up here. Okay. And then our source. So I'll just keep these gray for now so we know they're the third one. We need basically another one of these, but for the, for the third row. And I have to think about this. Okay. You are plugged into the source goes first, then the first result or the third result. Oh, right. I don't need two. I only need one more. That's so crazy. Uh, you go to here and you go here. No, then what goes here? Oh, right. Sorry. I'm confusing myself here. Source. Uh, this is our control net. And then this is our, um, our result. So just like the, just like the grid. So I have my text mask and I have up, up. I need one more up and a one more down. Okay. I hurt my brain for a little bit, but we're going to feel. So up, we need the text, the second one, because it's going to And this is going to be. Stop that. I'm going to be surprised to all hell if this works. If it works, I'll walk this back. I think that might work. Sucks we got to render this one just to find out. So I'm going to do 16 because <laughs> it'll take a lot less time. Okay, we'll do 16, 16, and 16, and then hopefully combine them. Oh, no, we won't. Uh, we didn't finish setting it up. <coughs> Terrible. Okay. Model comes from uh, Animate Diff. Okay. And our latent image comes from our latent image, which is... And our VAE comes from our load checkpoint, which is this red one up here. Red to red. And that should get rid of all the red circles. Whoops. Right. 
So now we're doing three diffusion runs. One's, uh, yeah. Uh, so we're doing um, media pipe, open pose, and depth. So this is just to show you, like, you could then, you know, this is how we can expand these. This routing's a little crazy, so I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go much further than this. I mean, if your brain's less uh, soft than mine uh, or less hard than mine, um, you might be able to do this. No, not yet. I'll check that out, though. Oh, I can't believe that worked. Ridiculous. So one other thing we could add, um, because I'm feeling particularly masochistic, um, I really like the color match node that's out. So I'm going to add another row of color matched uh, outputs to match the color of the original output. Because why not? Uh, that's not even going to be that hard to do. Wink. All right, let's do this. Uh, I just want a color matched output. Color match node. The color match node is in KJ nodes. It is awesome. So we're going to take our VAE decoder output from the first one, make that the target, and the reference image is going to be uh, our uh, video, like our, our, our input video. So that is going to be the image cropped version. And then that will go after. And if I am not wrong, which I usually, it's not usually the case, this should color match this one. It should do it quick because everything else is already done. Yeah. Okay. So that's the workflow. Let's add another one here. Decoder. No. Yeah. Our reference image comes from here. Oop. And we need one more. We got media pipe, open pose, and the reference is the input video. Crop node and yeah. <clears throat> okay. CM depth depth CM open pose open pose CM media pipe media pipe CM. Okay, and we want to put these color match outputs. We need these up there. So let's make reroutes for them. <clears throat> One, two, and three. Uh, 30, 50, uh, uh, four gigs, um, probably not, unfortunately. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, run, diffusion, run Diffusion is like uh, 50 cents an hour. That's probably a better use of your time because you'll be able to render a lot faster on that. Okay, so these are my uh, tri channel one, two, three of the uh, color match ones. Okay. Color match. Control net. Oh, you know what? Let's make these yellow. Let's make these color match because cyan. Yeah. And let's make these blue because output him. <clears throat> let's make this uh, red because it's the input. For Might help my brain. I need these reroutes to be on the next sort of set. Oh, no. I need one more on each. Oh, that's confusing. I think that's right. Nope. Got size 1536. Expected 1536, but got 2048. So one of these is silly. And uh, let's disconnect you and you and you, 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 and you. I think I know what the problem actually is. And I think I f just fucked up a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, Can I undo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the problem is I'm taking the width from the wrong place. Okay. Now image is free. I want to get the image size from this actual final one, I think. Because yeah. I was grabbing the width one too early. That's pretty cool. And if you wanted to, you could put text labels on, you know, uh, each thing. You know, you could say source, the type, result, and color match or whatever. Um, you would just have to, you know, hack the way that that text works. That's pretty cool. Well, it's getting late here, and uh, that's basically, you know, uh, all I wanted to cover tonight. So, yeah, I'll package this workflow up, pop it on the Discord. Um, there's already some comparison stuff on there uh, if you want to grab another one uh, already. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to kind of do it from scratch, build it up so, um, you know, you can see how the whole thing comes together. This 
of all this stuff in it. Like I said, this in here. And then this whole shebang. Let's make it. All right, cool. <clears throat> what else we have? Assemble. Um, yeah, I know this is like like chicken scratch and confusing, but uh hopefully just kinetically watching it go through the process will kind of knock some of these concepts uh you know into place in your brain. Um, this stuff didn't make sense to me until I uh really started dissecting some of the uh workflows on Banadoko that Kajai was doing. Um so yeah, like I said earlier, this community, uh, like I said last night, rather, you know, this community is pretty much uh, designed to help you uh, learn. So if you want to learn uh, all this stuff, go to Banadoko, go to my server. All my links are on purse.xyz. If you want to join the Discord, uh, you want to subscribe on uh, YouTube, all that stuff, to purse.xyz. All the socials are right at the very top. Uh, okay. Uh, and as always, if you love the channel, you love doing what we do here, you, you get into this stuff, you dig it. Um, you can support by, uh, hitting up patreon.com slash purs. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you get access to a special channel in the discord when you become a supporter. And, uh, yeah, I've got a mask pack coming of all the masks I've made on my, uh, streams and stuff. Uh, so you can just plug those into different control nets and get to work on those. I'm just right now, I'm just packaging them up and labeling them and stuff with their aspect ratios and, you know, the potential control nets that they're best used for so that, uh, it, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. Cause there's a lot of crap there. So it'd be good to be able to see what it's for. Anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, enjoy. And, uh, yeah, there'll be more cool stuff for subscribers in the future. Um, I'm going to try and figure out some kind of cool exclusive content. Uh, and, um, I'm thinking about starting a supporters only like um, hangout like uh, every couple of weeks on the discord where we just, uh, you know, make stuff, uh, you know, everybody makes stuff and drop it in the channel and just hang out and share prompts and ideas and stuff like that and workflows and all that stuff. So a more interactive way to hang out as opposed to me just streaming at you all the time. So yeah, uh, come join the community and as always join Banadoko because that server's insane and they got all the stuff you're going to need to do all the workflows. Yeah. Thanks everybody for hanging out and uh, I'll be back at it. Um, I think Tuesday night, uh, I got an idea for a stream. Uh, try and put some of this stuff together into something interesting and fun. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone and have a great night and go to sleep or don't. Uh, again, I'm not your mom.